The Nigerian police filed a suit asking the courts to stop the probing of the activities of the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. And the Nigerian Army Chief of Staff states that terrorism may continue for the next 20 years in Nigeria, depending on the willingness of the involved parties. This is Flux Politics. I am Kayode Ladende. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. The Nigerian police force has filed a suit at the Federal High Court in Abuja praying for an order stopping the various states' judicial panels of inquiry probing allegations of rights, abuses, and other acts of brutality of the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Court SAS. The plaintiff urged the courts to restrain the attorneys generals of the 36 states of the Federation and their various panels of inquiry from going ahead with the probe focusing on police impunity. Joining us to discuss this and to also understand the legal fireworks and other issues around it, we have two guests. Let me start with uh, Mr. Wale Ogwade, who is a legal practitioner and the uh, president of Voter Awareness Initiative. Good evening, Mr. Wali Ogwade. Good evening, how are you? Yeah, good to have you. And also we're being joined by Fermi Lawson, a public affairs analyst, and also a civil rights activist. Good evening, Fermi Lawson. Good evening, Mr. Yeah, let me start with the lawyer. And uh, let's look at um, why not preempting what the outcome would be. What do you make out of this move? by the Nigeria police? Well, to me, the, the police just thinks that they want to stall a good process. And they don't know that they, they are behind time or the tide has shifted from the police having a rough shot over the people. And not only in Nigeria, I'll just quickly uh, refer to some other countries, not only in America, but even in, in, in France that the police are going through serious uh, searchlight as to their activities. You see, the police must have a human face. And I guess this answers thing, particularly the pro panels that have been set up all over the country, I, 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 is a way in, in towards getting uh, sanity into the system. The police can still be the police and, of course, con conduct their activities with a human face. You want to arrest somebody, there's no need brutalizing the person. You want to get and obtain information from people, there is no need torturing them. You want to arrest people, there is no need uh, shooting at them. All you need to do is to get, get just tell them that you, 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 are, you are under arrest. If the person decides to run away, you just listen, you always get him. Just as a cliche, there is no how, no matter how long, the arm of the law will, get, uh, 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 will catch up with one. Then let's now go to the suit itself. One will expect that, well, maybe because of the various revelations that have been coming up, they look at it that indeed it's going to, uh, to, to put the, discredit the police institution as it is, and the only way is to stop it. But they forget that they are just like the, the, the ostrich that hid his head in the ground, and of course it's still it's outside. There is no way that their conduct and their act will, 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 will not bring them out. And one would have expected that they would just allow this thing to go. And of course, let the a probe panel come, conclude its work. Then it will be the results will be, will be like a, a, a truth and reconciliation thing that people will say, okay, this is what the police have done. Those who have been unjustly assaulted, brutalized, or denied justice will be compensated one way or the other. Even in some cases, it will just be an apology. An apology will do. But a situation where uh, you now want to, uh, the, the police think they can cover all the things and say no, there should not be any uh, operation, there should not be any petition, uh, uh, tribunal, and that, that they should stop it. To me, they are just trying to, uh, uh, how do I put it now, add more fuel to the integrated situation. 
Okay. They should just let this process go so that everybody okay. will know where he or she has erred and that will make corrections. Okay. If we want to, to me, it's just an act uh, trying to beat a baby and, of course, collect his uh, chin chin or biscuit and again tell the baby not to cry. Not to cry. That is injustice. Thank you so and much, uh, Mr. Wally Ogadi. I, I think that's a very wonderful uh, opening remark. I must say that you spoke purely as a council, and uh, we sincerely hope the council will be here too. But Femi Law Singh, is it clearer than we can imagine that this is a case of police thinking that their, 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 their excesses are being unraveled? For anyone who has followed even the processes of the judicial panel that the police have gone to court now to challenge you know, their activities, you will realize that the police has been on this path. In so many cases where the panel have requested for the police authority to produce some of those men that have been accused of one you know, crime or the other by the petitioners across the answers, you know, panels set up by the state, you realize that the police have often claimed that they don't have the identity of these men. In some cases, they go to the point of resisting, you know, the, the, with the witnesses of petitioners and those sort of conduct that have shown that the police would have taken this route. And I think why the police IGP has taken this step is because it was not served as demanded by Nigerian people during the NSAS protest. If the president had been you know, responsive enough to sack the IGP, he would not be there today going to court to challenge panels that the president directed should be constituted by the state. You must remember that it was the president that asked the federal state governors to constitute this panel to address, you know, the aftermath of the NSAS protest. And what the ITP is, has done is very simple. He has only asked the young people... Femi Lawson, Femi Lawson. And restate their demands. Femi Lawson. I'm sorry, just to put the record straight, I'm a bit lost here. I, I think mm -hmm. states, in their own intuition, in their own discretion, set up this panel, but they got a nod from the federal government because I'm a bit confused here because the police is an agency of the federal government, if I'm clear. So yes. the, don't the you think the federal, federal government government. is not confused in letting us know that this, in the first place, was the initiative of states and not necessarily the federal government? No, the, the state didn't just wake up. If you followed the processes that followed the nationwide protest, by young people. It was in the process of the submission demands. of the five or five demands by young people that the federal government responded by asking states to set up this judicial panel. And that is why you find majority of states doing this. It was not just because of the wish of the state government. And if an institution under the control of the same federal government, the police, which is at the center of this you know, whole process, is coming to challenge the fact that States are rising up to ask questions about their conduct just because we believe the police is a state. If police officers commit crimes in the state, can state I call spy them? Good question. Where Good question. Police officers are crime committed. Good question, the Femi. This is trying to run away from its crime, and I think it's a demand by the IGP for Nigerian young people to go back to the street and demand for action. Okay. Uh, uh, good question you've raised there. Uh, Mr. Ogwadi, uh, uh, why I'm asking Femi this question, and if you can help, help me further to explain it, I'm looking at some of your friends who raised this issue, that in the first place, um, can the state even prosecute an agency of the federal government if found guilty? And that's the question Femi also raised. Don't you think there's a bit of technicality that the arm of the federal government, and are we saying that the federal government does not have, I mean, the police does not have the support of the federal government? No. You see, law is an intricate thing. If a, a police officer, I mean, there's a legion of them in Lagos or all over the places that commit offenses against state laws, issues like rape, like even stealing, even maltreating some people on the street that you see that they are prosecuted in the high court of the various, of the various states. There is nothing like that. There, there, there is nothing that stops a, a, a policeman or even a staff of a federal agency from being prosecuted or being uh, sued 
in the high court. Okay. I have a matter I'm handling now that we sued a police officer in a Lagos high court that shot a, a, a Nigerian. Uh, of course, I won't go into detail. So, and of course, the, 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 the court held, uh, so the court ruled, uh, uh, of course, the judgment is against the police because indeed they shot them and so on and so forth. And of course, they, we are on it. They have gone on appeal, not because the court has no jurisdiction, but they are just looking for areas of technicality that they were not served. And whereas service, anyway, service was given, uh, they were served hearing notices severally. But that's just by the way. Where I'm going particularly is that there are, there are issues, there are laws that it does not, they don't federal police so if they commit any offense within the state they, they can go scot-free they are immune no but let me just leave that and go and explain this issue of answers really the issue is that the federal government bungled this issue from the beginning and i want all those who are watch, listening to listen very well the police is under the exclusive list and for being under the exclusive list they are controlled and uh, uh, by the federal government that's why you see that we call the, the governors just mere uh, chief, uh, chief security officers who have no power to indeed control the police themselves. Directives come from the Inspector General of Police, who is answerable to the president. So the government just decided to play to the gallery, where a set of these SARS, uh, these NSAS panels, and of course tell the governors, I, you know how it started, well, after the, immediately after the NSAS, they called all the governors to a meeting with the uh, with Shibajo, and of course, they now said, let them go and set up meetings all over. The whole thing is to assuage the feelings and to bring down tension of these answers. People like us knew from the onset that indeed there is a problem because there will be a time like this that even some of us too may say we want to question. And you agree with me that some even some colleagues of us went to court to question the legality of this uh, probe panel themselves. So that's one leg. The second leg itself is that when the NSAS panel will be sitting, issues that they're bringing up, are they in tandem with section 249 of the 1999 constitution or, parag or, or, or paragraph 4, uh, 14, 1 and 2 of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, Nigeria, of the 1999 constitution in the fourth, in the fourth schedule, or even the, the, the police act itself? Because when we put all these uh, legislations together, you'll find out that indeed, the, the governors have no power to set up such panel. What government could have done, that is the federal government, was to have do like they do, do, do constitute the election petition panels all over. And of course, what they do is that they will, they will set them up in Abuja and now then send them to the various state capitals and all, all over the country. But by saying that you people should set it up in your various state, that is a mistake in the first instance. And how to cure it, I don't know. But for me, fairness is that one would have expected that the police would allow this thing to go rather than going to court to challenge this technicality because it's a technical thing. And okay. of course, they can cure it. And of course, they cure, how they can cure it is that the government can even, the federal government can now say, okay, we make the, 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 the executive order by the president that all the, 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 the panels that have been set up by the various governments should now be dreams to have been set up okay. by the president by the president that okay. would make it, that would give you some meaning okay so uh, i'll come back to you let me go back to femi again femi uh, and i think uh, what mr wali ogwadi has done is to give us the position of the law and to also give us the intricacies of what the constitution says but trust me the conversation out there is we said it we said it, that the government is not sincere. We said it, that we are not likely to have a, a, um, a transparent process where police officers will be indicted and they will be made to face the wrath of the law. Are we going to look at other options of even taking this matter to court or we should insist on this judicial panel of inquiry? Well, of course, I am a lawyer. But to the best of my knowledge, the governors have power if they make the proper, you know, uh, proclamation, you, know, you understand, to constitute this judicial panels of inquiry. And in this case, I want to state that I don't think the Nigerian police force is on trial in any of these panels. Those that are on trial are individual police elements or uh, individuals who are hiding under being officers of the special and the European school that defunct, who committed crimes against humanity. The police force is not on trial. 
And the state, you know, the best of my knowledge, has power to probe the conduct of individuals, especially when I think that such a, you know, crimes are committed within their state. But as I said, I'm not a lawyer who waits for the court to determine if the state has this power to construe these panels or not. But the Nigerian police force is not on, on trial. The RGP is only trying to use that clause, you know, to cover up the crimes committed by individual policemen across the states of Nigeria. But whether the judicial panel continues to sit or not, whether the court nullifies the existence of the judicial panel or not, that will not in any way deter Nigerians from asking for justice for the victims of police brutality in Nigeria. As such, was just a thing in the demand of Nigerians. If we get to another stage, and the next place is surely coming, well, Nigerians will demand you know, for things that are bigger than you know, reform of police. If the government cannot be sincere enough, to destroy the sincerity by asking the questions around police brutality that have been raised by Nigerians, then Nigerians will ask bigger questions. And I'm very sure that Nigerians will not fall victim this time around for any frivolous panel that the same system that is setting up will come and select. Okay. We will demand for justice through every legitimate means, and I'm sure Nigerians will always win. Okay, Nigeria will always win. That is the goal. Uh, Mr. Gwade, let's also look at um, how can this panel be given more bites? We are looking at a lawyer requesting that the minister should appear before the panel and it appears the minister cannot be subpoenaed. We've had so many policemen ignoring calls from this uh, uh, justice or the panel so to say. How can they be given a bite so that this panel should be taken more seriously? As we speak, the international community is also monitoring this panel, and it appears it's a bit of um, taking it for granted. Yeah, I said it in my last intervention that all that needs to be done is for the, uh, the federal government through the office of the attorney general, Oh, no, sorry, the federal government through the office of the president to issue an executive order deeming all the actions taken in setting up the panel by the various state governors as being overtaken, take done by the, by the federal government or the presidency under executive order number so, 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 so. One, two, compelling all persons, institutions and authority as provided for in section 11C of the 1999 constitution, that all persons and authority are subject to the constitution. So, and of course, this panel is a creation of a constitution. So all persons and authority that the person will, that the, that the panel will call must oblige the panel. It does not matter who that person is. In as much as that person took office, by virtue of the 1999 constitution, such persons are subject to the dictates and the provisions of the 1999 constitution. And in a situation where section 36 of the 1999 constitution, that everybody who is a Nigerian has the right to fair hearing. Some people have been uh, messed up in terms of brutalized or made to go through one form of injustice or the other. And the only way that they can have that feeling of being accommodated is even when they are given the opportunity to be heard. And of course, those who have done evil or wrong against them, such persons too, they are made to face each other and they iron issues out. I guess that's the only way we can even talk about healing and reconciliation. And if people begin to play pranks using the instrumentality of the law or pretending or acting as if they are above the law, then definitely it will not go away. It will still continue to send that signal that really brought about the NSAS protest. Don't forget, for your information, that the NSAS protest is not just a protest against the police itself, but against all these injustices that we see in the land. Every and time. I think that the best thing government should do, particularly now that this thing wants to get out of hand, is for an executive order to be made so as to bring sanity to the system. Give the people, people go there to ventilate their grievance. Now, when they now kill them, where do you want to push them to? Okay. You want to push them on the ground? I don't think government okay. wants that to happen. I, I'm coming to you in a in, in few seconds from now. Let me just take 30 seconds from Femi, and I'll also take 30 seconds from you because of our time. Femi, okay, let me make it 45 seconds, or let's say one minute. <laughs> Femi, how do we ensure that this is not just a media trial? The media is following up the case. 
people are, I mean, people are hearing a whole lot of revelations. How are we sure that, you remember the Oputa panel, you remember some other panels, mighty revelations, but did we get justice? Did we get the healing? Did we get the reconciliation that Mr. Ogwande talked about? We will hopefully get that because the generation that uh, is currently engaged in this is not the generation that took cases to put up panel and all other panels that ended up, you know, in the drawers of the federal government in the past. I can be very sure that the generation that is involved in this present situation will not only pursue this in the, in the courts, you know, in the high courts of Nigeria or under the laws of the man, it is also going to press further. By ensuring that internationally, every person that are going to be found culpable, that have committed crimes against Nigerian people, are brought to justice. Only recently, the Parliament of the United Kingdom took a position as an aftermath of this same demand by Nigerian young people. And they should be rest assured that other international authorities are interested in this. And if these people, including the police ID, think they are above the law in Nigeria, they will not, not definitely be above the law internationally. And the day of justice shall come for everybody. Awesome. And Mr. Gwadi, how do we ensure that this is not just a mere media trial? Personalities will be compelled to come and we can have a sense of healing, reconciliation, and what have you that you, uh, that you, you, you are pushing? Yes. Just uh, my own take on that is, again, I still reiterate that the federal government should put more bite mocked it to this panel through empowering them, making a statement, and of course giving policy directives through an executive order, directing all persons and authority and institution that have been so called, have been so invited, has been so indicted, has been so named to come to before each of the panels in which they have been called to now answer their father's name, as we normally say. Not that they will now quickly run to court, to now want to disturb it, to now want to quash such proceedings, or even stall the trial, or even at worst, even call for the disbandment of the, of the panel. Oh, no. no doubt, they are one, they, 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 the principle of law is that, uh, that something cannot be built on nothing. And of course, the Bible will tell me that if the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous mm -hmm. do? But be that as it may, I'm just still talking about reconciliation because justice is a cycle. If it does not come to you today, it will come to you tomorrow. And of course, many people will have interface and with the law. And of course, when they have a conflict with the law, they too want justice. And it is that in that process that we want a just and egalitarian society, which is doable. It just takes all of us to now cooperate with each other to ensure that indeed we have it done. We are not, it is not an issue of police alone. It's a general thing so that Nigeria will be a better, place, a better place for all of us. Thank you so much, Wale Ogwade, a legal practitioner and the president of Voter Awareness Initiative. This time around, we are not discussing thank election, but thank you for your insight. <laughs> yeah. The God be the glory. And uh, Femi Lawson, thank you for always, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I'm always picking our calls whenever we call you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, we will take a short break, and when we return, the chief of army staff makes a scary revelation that terrorism may last a longer time than we ever imagined. We'll be right back after the short break.